we have to be ready for the challenge on on Sunday. It's obviously a, a huge game for us. If we can win it, it really piles some pressure on them. If they win it, they'll be looking and thinking they've got four games in hand and they're only a point behind us. So it's the big one, folks. Blackburn Rovers up against Wigan Athletic at Ewood Park on Sunday. Rovers come into this. Four wins on the spin. Can we make it five? We'll talk about that match and much more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match preview. This time building up to the biggest game of the season. Third place Wigan up against first place Blackburn Rovers. This game could go a long way to decide who goes up as champions or he, who even goes into the playoffs. All that kind of madness could hinge on this result. We'll talk more about the match in just one second. But if you're new, hit the subscribe button and keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So let's take the match itself in a bit more detail. It takes place at Ewood Park on the 4th of March 2018. It's a new kickoff for those UK fans. Uh, last season, Wigan finished 23rd in the Championship and they were relegated with us. Current top goal scorer is Will Grigg with 16 goals and the key man pulling the strings is Paul Cook. Over the years, the two sides have met 25 times. Blackburn Rovers winning 14 of them, Wigan winning 6 and the two sides have drawn 5 apiece. As for the last 5 fixtures at Ewood Park, they look like this. Uh, Rovers winning the last 3 and you have to go all the way back to May 7th, 2012. Uh, for Wigan's last victory, of course, that was back in the Premier League. But last time out, it was, the, it was in the Championship. Rovers winning 1-0. And we also won 3-1 the season before, also in the Championship. And in fact, we've not lost against Wigan Athletic at Ewood Park since we've been relegated from the Premier League. So hopefully, that form can continue. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the starting eleven. First and foremost, we're going to look at Blackburn Rovers. Raya in goal, Naimbi, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Armstrong and Tonson. And Gray. I'm going for Antonison this time up front alongside Graham and Armstrong. I think he offers a bit more uh, resilience than Payne does. I think Payne is very weak. I did mention that in the review show. The only reason I think you would change this side is due to fitness or illness or any injuries that will come up between now and kickoff on Sunday. Let's take a look at the statistics. Uh, depending on where you look, uh, this is what I found. Danny Graham and Bradley Dag both. Top the goal scoring charts for Rovers with 15 goals apiece. Charlie Mulgrew starting to lag behind now with 12 goals. Meanwhile, in fourth place, Dominic Samuel with eight goals. Meanwhile, into the discipline, Smallwood has nine, Yellows, Bennett has seven, Williams has six, Dak has six. As for the Reds, Bennett has two, Samuel has one, and Travis in there with one. Meanwhile, as for the form book, we are four wins on the spin. And here are a quick glance at some of those fixtures last time out we did beat Wimbledon at their gaff 3-0 before beating Walsall at their place 2-1 before beating Bury Monday night underneath the lights 2-0 at Ewood Park all the way back 13th of February Valentine's Eve fixture we took on Portsmouth at Fratton Park and we won 2-1 before holding out for a 2-2 draw at Ewood Park against Oldham as for Wigan this is how I think they will line up on Sunday Walton Byrne Dunkley Byrne Elder, Massey, Power, Powell, Morsey, Grigg, and Jacobs. Very some very similar names in there. You got Massey and Morsey. You got Bryn and Byrne, and you got Power and Powell. So it's a bit bizarre there. A bit uh, a commentator's nightmare, I think. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the statistics for Wigan. Grigg has got 16 goals. Powell has 12. Jacobs has got eight, and Massey has five. Into the yellows, Morsey's got nine. Byrne has got five. Massey's got four, and Powell's got four. As for the Reds, Dunkley and Elder both have a red to the name. As for the form book, let's take a look at this. Wigan Athletic, uh, last time out, they took on Rochdale when they won 1-0 before beating Manchester City in the FA Cup. What a result that was. 1-0 at uh, the DW. I think that's what they call it. I'm not sure if they've renamed it or whatever. Before that, at their place, they did lose to GB's Blackpool. That was a cracking result. And also before that, they lost to Southend United at Roots Hall. And all the way back to Saturday, the 3rd of February, they beat Gillingham at their place so a bit inconsistent form but they won the last two and they do keep two clean sheets uh will the momentum be on this side will they be a bit uh, rusty uh for not playing a game for a while so those are little factors that we're gonna have to think about as kickoff looms now you've heard a little bit of what i've had to say about the match here's an extended cut of what tony mowbray said shortly after the final whistle against wimbledon i think a professional performance i think um you know the, I think we're finding it 
comfortable to get the players now to the point of realising that every game is, is huge, their adrenaline levels before the kick-off are good, it's, um, the intensity required to win football matches is, is, is spot on at the moment and this is a difficult, tricky, let's say, a tricky tie for us tonight, a tricky game to come away to Wimbledon on a freezing cold Tuesday night and um, against a team that's scrapping for points and a team that can scrap and they play forward, you have to defend well and um, and it just got over a tricky hurdle, I think, tonight, very professionally. And I think that's why it was a bit of a scrappy opening half an hour, because we knew they were going to play direct, put the ball in behind us. We had to see that off. We had to compete for second balls. Smallwood, that's why we played Bennett in centre mid tonight with Smallwood. To, you know, knew it was going to be an attritional game early on. Um, and as it loosened off, Corey came on and Benno, he scored a fantastic goal from a position I know he can play, coming in on his right foot off the left. and. Um, yeah, listen, happy enough. It's great for the supporters who made a trip a long, long way tonight and um, it's great for them to see some goals going in and, and as I said, next one ticked off. 11 to go now and we've just got to keep going. Yeah, it was a strange goal really, wasn't it? It was, I think, sure it would bring a header back across the goal from Bradley and it's dropped over the goalie and, and linesman flagged it in, so we've checked that. I think the other two goals were, you know, were, were top goals. Bennett's strike and then a, a brilliant burst of speed from Graham down the left wing for Bradley's goal. Um, yeah, listen, the first goal was important, to be honest. If they'd have scored the first goal and given them something to hang on to, it would have made it a really difficult night for us, I think. But um, here we are talking after the game, 3-0. Um, let's get back on the bus, get back to Blackburn and get ready to start preparing for Sunday. Oh, I think so, I think so, yeah. I think, to be honest, I, I would have had Elliot at the start of the season down for five or six goals and uh, with the power in his right foot. And yet I've moved him around the pitch this year quite a bit. Um, you know, on the right side, he's, it's not so um, effective as you know, he cuts inside. He doesn't really show with his left foot and it's difficult from the angle when he's going up and down the right side. So coming in off the left is important. Um, but yeah, listen, I know he can do that. I see he does it every day in training, and uh, so I've got no problem tucking him in off the left in some games. But um, yeah, he's he's happy in there, and hopefully he's got a few more in the locker in the last you know, 11 games. Listen, he was, we, we gave him a new contract a few months back, and um, only because I, you know I value. First and foremost, I value the personality, the lad, the character, the drive, the desire to do well. I des um, I see the versatility as a football player who can play in different positions for us. Um, I see somebody who's humble and wants to work hard every day in training and I think that's the type of player I want to work with really and, and um, yeah, I'm delighted for him, you know, at least a big voice in the dressing room but he knows what's right and wrong and uh, that's why he's a voice of reason I think and uh, happy that he signed a new deal, happy that he's helping the team at the moment and um, let's just keep going with him. Yeah, he plays with a touch of arrogance, which is which is nice arrogance. I don't think he ever takes liberties with people, but he's got wonderful ability, wonderful talent, and almost nonchalantly lift it in the roof of the net. Um, that's Bradley at this, and I think in tight football matches, players like Bradley Dack can make the difference and um, you know unlock doors for teams. And delighted he's our player, and delighted that he's doing well. And um, as again, I'm not getting carried away. We just have to keep working hard, keep going. Yeah, listen, we, we, listen, we've had our stages where we've been playing catch-up, I'd have to say. You know, early season, we were always two or three games behind because of the international breaks. And um, I know we're going to have a, a, a few games behind. And um, it's not easy to win all your games as, they, as you start to play every midweek. Um, but listen, they, they will win football matches. They're a top team. And um, we have to be ready for the challenge on... On Sunday, it's obviously a, a huge game for us. If we can win it, it really piles some pressure on them. If they win it, they'll be looking and thinking they've got four games in hand and they're only a point behind us. So, um, or two points behind us, I think it probably is. But um, let's see. Let's just wait. We, you know, it's just the next game for us. We need to prepare for it and then um, try and pick the right team that gives them problems. What about the fans? Well, on social media, it's a little bit quiet, but if you head over to the BRFCS forum, you can see many, many Rovers fans and they are very vocal. Here's the first one, Dally Dally, straight out the blocks. Excellent result tonight. Bring on Wigan. We are on a roll. Fancy us this Sunday. My team would be Raya, Nayimbi, Lennigan, Mulgrew, Williams, Smallwood, Bennett, Armstrong, Dak, Payne and Graham. Pretty much the same lineup that started against Wigan. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, again, say my opinion about Payne. I'm not one over. He's not won me over yet. Um, just like Samuel, he's yet to win me over as well. So uh, I think Payne, at best, 
on the bench for me. Meanwhile, blue boy, 3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Bennett wide right before Payne any time. Bennett adds balance and strength. Payne is a number 10 and nothing else. S8 and Blue said this. The fight of Bennett and Smallwood is getting us a foothold in games. See what happens and make changes as necessary. But I feel we have to start with the same team. We will win this. Straight up Tom said. Glad Smallwood navigated tonight without a yellow card. Would have been a big loss. Go with the team that started tonight. I'm not saying play for one. But how good or bad does anyone think a draw would be after our victory last night? Pastor, I think a draw is not... It all depends on what goes on Saturday. If Shrewsbury lose, then I think a draw is okay. It's acceptable. But uh, obviously, we're going to go into this uh, guns blazing, try and get a win, try and get the three points, because that will just do a wonder of good for Rovers. And it will start to uh, open up a huge gap between uh, ourselves and the chasing pack. Uh, so I will, I will assess it. I, my point of view, I would just take a look back on the, after Saturday, see how Shrewsbury got on. And if they draw or lose, then, you know, a draw or even a defeat is not all doom and gloom. I don't really want to put that word defeat in your heads, but, uh, but um, it all, all depends on Shrewsbury. Let's hope they stumble a little bit and give us a bit of breathing space. Matt 83, I reckon a lot depends what Shrewsbury do. If they win on Saturday, a draw effectively puts us back into third. But if they fail to win, a draw wouldn't be horrendous as Shrewsbury would stay behind us regardless of their game in hand. Also, a draw pretty much means we're only playing for second. I'd definitely set out to win. Let Wigan worry about what we bring rather than trying to nullify what Wigan brings. Exactly what I said, Matt, 83. Meanwhile, Tyrone Shoelaces, I watched Wigan play in the cup tie. You couldn't help but be impressed, especially with the way they defended. If they play anything like as well as that against us, we'll have our hands full. Let's hope they don't. I think we can keep them relatively quiet up front, especially now Lenehan is back and playing well. The issue is, can we score one goal more than they do? That's the way to do it. That's how to win football games. Outscore the opponent. We have goals all over the place, especially if Danny Graham continues his red-hot form at Ewood Park. And now Dak, you never know what's going to come from him. He might have an amazing game, just like he did uh, last night against Wimbledon. Or he might have a horrendous game. But Armstrong scores goals. Uh, I'm sure there's a goal in pain if he comes on. Antonison could score goals if he's uh, given the nod. Uh, and now Bennett. He might do a worldie once again on Sunday. You know, I... I that's one area of the field I don't uh, have any concerns with at the moment. It's just our defence and hopefully we can keep them quiet. Meanwhile, uh, JD, if you offer me a draw now, I'd take it. Keep us six clear of Wigan, but as already mentioned, they have games stacked up and we'll be playing twice a week from now till season end. If they can win next cup game and then add another to the mix, the minds also turn to Wembley. All that can affect the players and it'll be tough to keep on winning when they need to do. Philip L just got to go for the win. Anything less than a win potentially takes automatic promotion out of our hands again. Remember, yes, Wigan played a blinder against City, but so did Rochdale against Spurs. Those are one-off games. Sunday is bread and butter league football, albeit probably the game of the season in League One. Wigan will come into it rested, whereas we come into it uh, on a nice little run of wins, including leaping the potential banana skin of Wimbledon away. Both sides will be feeling really, really confident. Uh, my only fear, given the way Mowbray has overcompensated for the far lesser opposition, is that we will get scared by the boss's tactics and pre-match talk instead of going for their weaknesses and treating it the same way as we did. The Shrewsbury fixture. Meanwhile, Revenge Blue. My only worry about this game is that Tony Mowbray tries to overthink it or retreats into his shell thinking it's a must-not-lose as opposed to must-win fixture and tries to play some fancy formation or put seven defensive players out on a pitch like he did against Berry. Play with fantastic temper when Dak, Armstrong and Payne are on the pitch at the same time. So for me, we simply must go with the lineup which started last night's game and with which we have done and performed so well. Anything else, it's just inviting trouble. Rover Sean said this, must win. Win this and it's the once improbable automatic promotion is in the bag. Lose and it's as you were a month ago. Meanwhile, K Hod, uh, do what we did against Shrewsbury at home and we'll beat them, I reckon. Make them worry about us. That being said, it needs a hell of a defensive performance to pull it off. And those attackers of ours need to do what they do best. And that's put the ball in the back of the net. I added a few words there for you, K. Hod. Meanwhile, Simon Garner's 194. Biggest and most difficult game of the season. We must have the right mindset from the start. None of this team of two halves nonsense or I feel we'll be punished. It will be interesting to see the crowd for this one. The weather and live TV may hit the attendance. 2-1. 
I think he's going for Rovers. As for J.H. Rover, Wigan's record against the better sides in this league is not impressive. Certainly not as impressive as our record against the top half season this season. They drew 0-0 with us despite having a man advantage for more than 30 minutes and offered little threat. They picked up one point from six against Shrewsbury, failed to score against them. They lost at home to Bradford when Bradford were in the top six. Also one point from six versus uh, Peterborough and a 0-0 draw with Charlton at home. Sides that have been in and around the playoffs. So I'll be looking more at those results and comparing that as being far more relevant to the job in hand on Sunday than what they did in the Cup versus Man City. Do our bit as we have really regularly against the top sides this season and we'll cause them problems. And finally, 1864 Roverite. Rovers do not need to be concerned about anyone other than themselves. It is about what we do. A Rovers win troubles the pressure on Wigan. Anything that happens below us doesn't matter. In fact, I think if anything, the current teams from third to eighth are in a dogfight, so let's just concentrate on BRSC. It's all that matters, boys. You're right, 1864 Rover. I'm just hoping we come out of it the right end uh, and get the three points, because that will be absolutely monumentous. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Wigan Athletic. Here are three of them. Stefan Hencho. Remember this fella, defender? He also donned uh, Wigan's shirt for a brief period. I think he was more renowned for his time at Rovers. Meanwhile, this fella, Pascal Chembonda, uh, again, more prominent at his time for Wigan. But he did, I think he had a bit of a blinder up against uh, Burnley one time, uh, way back when, for Rovers. As for this guy, Jason Roberts, again, uh, it's, it's it's hard to call this one. I'm not sure. I know, he did score many, many goals for Wigan, but he also scored some important ones. He was an important player for Rovers during his time. If you want to check out a full list of all players that have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Wigan Athletic, head over to my WordPress site. Details in the description below. There's a full list there. And there's a full list of all the other teams in this division. Check it out. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. So it's not what I've had to say about the match. It's not even what the gaffer or the fans have to say about the match. It's what Cast the Cat thinks will happen this time out at Ewood Park between Blackburn Rovers and Wigan Athletic. Now, before we go and see this video, if you're squirmish, if you don't like to look at something painful, look away now. And I do apologise. She's been punished for her decision. My goodness, what is she doing? No food for the cat today. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I keep you bang up to date. With all things Blackburn Rovers, I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out that forum, make sure you do so. Cracking opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans from around the world. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Links for those places, including the forum, in the description below. So it comes to this, folks. The biggest game of our season up against Wigan Athletic at Ewood Park. Now, it's not going to decide whether we go promoted or in the playoffs or anything like that, but it will go a long way to determining where we're going to finish in the league. Win it, and we could start to think realistically about automatic promotion. Lose, and then the dreaded thought of the playoffs and all that kind of mess will come into our heads. As a draw, not sure about that. We might be on the fence. Depends on what goes on Saturday. But either way, I'll be back here to talk about the match after the final whistle and dissect the result see where we go from there anyway if you enjoy this video once again thumbs up subscribe ciao for now thanks again for watching please like share and most importantly hit that subscribe button it'll keep you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers but if you want to check out something completely different head over to my other youtube channel you do that by pressing the button right there if you want to check me out on twitter facebook details are in the description below so until next time thumbs up subscribe